Uh, Eternal September, uh, the rise of amateur culture is a project that uh, aims to explore a particular theme uh, and the theme is the relationship between uh, uh, professional art making and uh, uh, the rising tide of uh, the amateur movement uh, on the web. So uh, the, the main question that the, the, the exhibition uh, wants to, uh, to pose is uh, about the professionalism as a category itself. So what does it mean today to be a professional artist in this kind of context? Uh, we don't want to uh, provide any uh, final answers to answer to this question, but we think that it's important to raise the question and to address this new situation situation of our visual culture. Um, we can start with the work by Steve Roggenbach, uh, the one you see uh, here. Uh, we are showing three videos and uh, they are taken from uh, his YouTube channel. Uh, Steve Roggenbach is a young American poet and his main goal is to uh, uh, find a new way to be a poet in the internet era. So in uh, his YouTube channel, uh, but also on other social networks like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Vine, etc., he uh, tries to uh, find a connection uh, between the language of poetry, also historically, and uh, the new language that, is, uh, 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 that has been born on the web. There's another work here by um, a collective called, actually it's a duo of artists, of Russian artists. They are called Alexei Shulgin and Aristav Chernivshev. And uh, uh, the group is called Electro Boutique. And this piece is called Artomat. And it's basically a software. Uh, and it's a generator uh, of art. Uh, if you use the, this uh, software on the touching, touch screen monitor, but it's also available online on the website, uh, you can basically create your own artwork. You see some examples around the, the screen, uh, combining some uh, predefined features. In the exhibition we have uh, uh, very different uh, kinds uh, of uh, artworks, um, a lot of different mediums. We have uh, uh, installation, painting, sculpture, videos and everything. Uh, al almost every uh, medium you can uh, experience. Um, the first work I want to show you is this one. It's uh, a sculpture by a Canadian artist called Mascal Lasser and uh, is an amazing sculpture and he made this uh, carved uh, human skull that is life-sized uh, manually into the, this uh, uh, stack of books. Uh, but if you turn, uh, uh, this, uh, turn around the sculpture and see the other side, you can uh, have another uh, clue to the theme of the of the work, because the the, the books are uh, old software manuals, uh, and so the whole work uh, that is called Incarnate is uh, um, a sort of contemporary vanitas. You know the genre of the vanitas in uh, in painting. Uh, the, the vanitas that means vanity. Uh, it's. Uh, um, a symbolic kind of, of, of artwork that uh, uh, basically wants to remind you that uh, um, you shouldn't uh, pay so much attention to physical stuff and you should concentrate to, uh, with, uh, on uh, spiritual uh, uh, questions because all that is material is going to decay and it's going to die eventually in the end. Uh, and in this case, uh, uh, the theme of obsolescence is uh, 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 represented by old software manuals. So the, the contemporary vanitas refers to the obsolescence of technology, of hardware and software. Mm. These are four paintings, uh, but they are not just normal abstract uh, paintings. Uh, the artist is a British artist, his name is Phil Thompson, and the project is called Copyrights and of course uh, it deals with uh, this huge issue of copyright uh, uh, in our uh, age. The source of these images is uh, a um, Google uh, art project, which is a sort of uh, a museum version of Google Street View. 
uh, so if you go online on this on their website you can basically uh, go um, navigate and walk uh, virtually inside uh, some uh, very uh, uh, renowned international museum and explore their collection uh, through through your browser uh, but sometimes you can have this strange awkward experience because uh, as you walk around you find some blurred objects that you can't recognize they are all uh, um, uh, blurred and and and, um, and hidden uh, to, to the viewer and that happens because uh, some uh, museums and some uh, collectors don't want to uh, give permission uh, to Google uh, to reproduce the artworks uh, and so what you get is just blurred pictures and what the artist did is uh, uh, to uh, take some of these uh, uh, blurred stuff and uh, he sent these pictures to uh, China uh, to a professional uh, com painting companies actually that are active in China and ask them to reproduce uh, uh, these images in paint. The last one is a work by French artist Paul Destier and the work is uh, named uh, My Favorite Landscape and as you can see uh, the, uh, is based on a very popular image which is the uh, uh, Windows XP uh, uh, wallpaper, the desktop. Uh, the, the, the image is a very, uh, it's one of the most uh, uh, viewed image of, of our time, probably. Uh, the installation uh, is, uh, um, uh, takes this picture and, and reconfigure, uh, reconfigure it in, in a, uh, as a bug. It, it's, it's like a computer error that generates all these uh, copies of, of, uh, of this image. And I think that it's uh, uh, very interesting for several reasons. And the first one is this uh, uh, um, comparison between the natural landscape and the, uh, I mean the virtual landscape, the, this uh, uh, new horizon uh, that we look at every day through our computer. And also this theme of the error, of the, the, the possible uh, crash of technology, which is another um, interesting uh, aspect of, uh, of technology. The work by American artist David Orvitz. Uh, uh, this work is uh, called Public Access, and it's uh, uh, a sort of uh, performance he did uh, uh, on and offline at the same time. Because in uh, 2010 and 11, he drove up uh, through all the uh, coast of California from Mexico to, to the north and he uh, took uh, pictures of himself uh, on the shore watching, uh, the, watching the sea. In, uh, uh, you, you can see that all the shots are very similar and they want to uh, remind you of the, of the romantic images like the painting by Friedrich, for example. Uh, and he took uh, maybe like something like 50 uh, photographs and then he uploaded uh, these uh, photographs on Wikipedia. Uh, of course every image in the Wikipedia page uh, corresponding to that particular spot, to that particular beach. Uh, and his idea was to infiltrate uh, this encyclopedia and to kind of uh, uh, make some uh, um, uh, unauthorized appearance on it. Uh, this is a work by uh, French artist Colin Guillemet. It is called um, um, Around the World, and it's quite um, self-explanatory. It's uh, uh, a proper sculpture, I think, but also a very humorous and, and, and clever object that, it's, that reminds us of all kinds of unconventional behaviors and also um, a, a sort of uh, um, it also embodies the concept of translation, which is very uh, which is very interesting. And last work in this uh, in this room uh, is a series of pictures. Uh, the artist is uh, Mark McEvoy. is uh, uh, Belfast born, but he lives in Scotland. And these are just. Uh, 
little selection uh, of photographs uh, taken uh, from his Tumblr blog it's called New Lyrics for All Songs. It's the name of the blog and of uh, the, the, the entire project. And it basically works with uh, appropriation of images, of um, found material of, um, uh, uh, of a different type, and, uh, and it also uses mashup and remix. He wants to um, underline the fact that internet is a place where you, uh, the, the, the source and the context get lost most of the time, so you just have to remind that uh, the web is not a reliable narrator and that you have to really check because images can be deceiving. In uh, this room you find three works. Uh, we can begin from the, the, the little one there and it's uh, a work by um, an artist called Helmut Smits. It's from the Netherlands and uh, this work uh, is called YouTube staring at the wall and it's a minimal and very playful intervention uh, there are actually just eight nails of different dimensions uh, in the wall and they uh, and, and, and you you can see that it's of course the YouTube wheel the loading wheel of, of uh, the videos you can see you see uh, on YouTube before the video uh, starts and it's a very iconic image but in this case is just a symbol it's totally motionless so you can do nothing but stare at it it's, it's just a, a kind of, of brand itself it, it, you just see eight nails and you think of YouTube here is a work by a, a British uh, uh, artist and illustrator called Aled Lewis uh, this is a, a very uh, light and, and, and funny work. It, 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 it is an artwork in, in form of a meme uh, because it, it's based on a famous uh, uh, meme template which is the Futurama uh, template. Um, and it says, not sure if art, if art or copyright infringement. And this is uh, another uh, tongue-in-cheek ref uh, reflection on copyright and that suggests you to uh, rethink uh, authorship. And the last uh, but not least in this room is this uh, uh, big installation that is composed uh, by many, many pieces. It's by uh, an Italian artist named uh, Mauro Ceolin. And uh, this installation is called Meme Zoology. And as you can see, it's focused on the many animals and digital creatures that inhabit our uh, world on, on the web. Um, this work is part of a larger project that is called uh, uh, Contemporary Naturalism. And uh, Mauro basically tries to act as a biologist. Uh, and, and, and tries to um, use taxonomies and scientific method to uh, make a catalogation and uh, um, a, a proper study of these creatures in, like they were real creatures. In this room you can find most of the amateur works. Uh, there are three videos uh, we um, downloaded from YouTube. Sometimes, like in this case uh, of the, uh, the game Pro, they, uh, their video is uh, not really meant to be art in the first place. Uh, it's called Neon Cat 10 Hours Reaction Video and uh, it's uh, a performance, basically a crazy one, because it just uh, uh, stood in front of the monitor for 10 hours straight, recorded it, and put it on YouTube, and he's watching this annoying video of the neon cat, which is one, uh, one uh, very popular meme, which has also this uh, annoying so uh, soundtrack that is repetitive and, <laughs> and really uh, hard to, to bear. And he watches it for 10 hours, where you can see uh, the clock uh, that uh, uh, is, is there as a, as a proof of, of authenticity. Of course, we don't really know if it happened actually. We had to actually trust it. I mean, you can see it, but uh, you have to uh, really watch uh, yourself 10 hours of that stuff, of, of a guy watching uh, an Iron Cat video. So 
you kind of uh, sort of appreciate the idea, you can really verify it. Sure, yeah. And that happens in art uh, a lot of times. Yeah? Um, the, the second video is uh, uh, by uh, a woman. She uh, signs as, as Wendy Vinity or Mad Cat Lady, and she's a very active uh, uh, YouTube user. And uh, uh, she made hundreds of uh, 3D animation videos, and she uh, uh, has this strangely compelling visual style. She is very naive, but also very humorous. She has this uh, surreal touch, uh, and it's very interesting. In fact, she attracted a lot of att attention from art magazine and art critics. And the last one is uh, uh, another very famous video. It's, uh, um, it, it, it also uh, got viral, and it's very strange is uh, uh, the video has been uploaded on YouTube by this uh, uh, user that is called Dennis Logan uh, or uh, uh, Spatula007, uh, the nickname, and he just made a mashup uh, of two different sources. He found this uh, uh, strange <laughs> footage on the web with this man slapping his cats on an ironing board, uh, and he um, uh, just added a soundtrack, uh, which is uh, a song by the, Joy the band Joy Division, Atmosphere. The last video is uh, uh, a visual essay, I will say, by two uh, Polish artists. Their name are uh, Pavel Sisiak and Timek Borowski. And uh, they published this video on the web uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, the video is called How Art Works. It's a visual essay that tries to raise some questions about art, uh, about what art is today, what it the, is the social role of artists, and why uh, artists are more and more interested in uh, self-recognition and less interested in uh, art, in, in making the real, uh, the actual artwork. The last project is not, uh, it's not an artwork, it's more a research project. Uh, it, it, it's uh, uh, called uh, The Great Wall of Memes. It's actually a wall covered in uh, uh, pictures of, of very popular memes. And as you can see, most of them are art related. Uh, I started collected, uh, collecting this uh, kind of images a couple of years ago. Uh, and then I started organizing them and, and, and trying to understand how art images are uh, uh, seen, used and, and modified by people. Art images uh, are circulating in the, uh, on the internet uh, without any caption or uh, credit most of the time. Uh, and so uh, they are just files among files. They are being used, uh, they are being downloaded, they are being modified and reshared again. So you can find this uh, uh, amazing uh, number of versions of the same uh, of the same work. So people don't just uh, look at art. They just they, they feel the need to start an appropriation of this uh, appropriation process. So they uh, want to own the image. And, and most of the time, they want to uh, make their own versions of it. And I find this uh, uh, process very uh, interesting and very, very important.